Hello, my friend. With all of the talk lately about honest reviews and how do you decide what to purchase based on your favorite influencers' recommendations and can you trust influencers and if you can't trust influencers, who can you trust? I decided to see if my opinion on products matched up with the reviews on Sephora's website. So what I did was I went to the website, I sorted by top rated, and then I scrolled all the way to the bottom to the 2,800 and some results and built a full face of products from there. So if you'd like to know first what those products are that are the worst rated on Sephora, why people don't like them, and see how they go on my face, full day wear test, all the information you need to know, hang tight. We're jumping into it right now. So as you can see, I do have all of the products on my face and I feel like my face looks pretty decent considering these are the worst rated products at Sephora. I do wanna mention I did have some criteria in order to pick these products. First, it had to have more than 30 reviews and then I just built a full face from the bottom up and one thing that I was really surprised about was that some of the products that are the lowest rated on Sephora's website are at three stars or a little bit higher. The lowest rated product that I have to show you today is a 1.7 stars, but the highest rated is a 3.2 stars. So there is a very large range there when it comes to the products that I chose. I found it absolutely fascinating. I went over on Twitter and I, I was like, hey, I'm buying all these low rated products at Sephora. What do you think about Sephora reviews? Do you trust Sephora reviews? And the vast majority of people that responded on Twitter were like, no, I don't. Because people that review things on Sephora oftentimes don't read what the product is supposed to do or how it works and then they judge it based on that or they see that it's they think that it's going to be something and then they get it and then it's not that thing. So I would love to hear your thoughts about the things that I talk about in this video down in the comments down below. You can leave one comment, you can leave multiple comments as you watch. It's however you enjoy commenting. So let's just go ahead and show you what I got. Starting with the highest rated product that I got at 3.2 stars is the Tarte Mini Maracuja Creaseless Concealer. It is a vegan full coverage creamy under eye concealer with a new applicator that's totally foolproof and travel friendly. And with this this particular product, the full size also has 3.2 stars and they also had the exact same complaints. And the complaints about this product are about that it isn't creaseless, <laughs> that it definitely creases up in the under eye and also that it has a sticky texture. The second lowest rated product on here, while well, it's tied actually, is the KVD Beauty Shake Primer High Impact Vis Invisible Eyeshadow Primer. I will tell you, I am kind of terrified of this product. It is real weird looking. So you can see it is a liquid and then there's these black like floaties in it. Like what is even happening? It's so weird. Like what is going on? And I've never used a liquid primer like this before. The biggest complaints about this product is that it doesn't make eyeshadow last longer. And worse than that, eyeshadow's grease on people. And a lot of people were saying they thought that was due to the texture of the product, that the product inside was oily. So we will test that out today. The next four products all come in at three stars each. And one of them I've actually been using for a really long time. And if you've been watching the channel, you know I rave about it. It is the Makeup by Mario Master Blade Brow Pencil. I'm using it today in the shade Classic Brunette. I was shocked when I saw this so low down on Sephora's ratings. This was sent to me by Makeup by Mario. The whole range was back at launch and I've been raving about it ever since. The big complaints on this are that the color payoff is not good and also that it breaks. And I do want to talk to you about that, about the breaking thing. We'll talk about it when we're applying. I'll give you all the details. Next is what is on my lips right now. This is the Lady Gaga House Labs Atomic Shake Long Lasting Liquid Lipstick. They say it is a revolutionary clean Transfer proof, transfer proof liquid lipstick that delivers high impact color with a glossy vinyl finish that lasts all day. And I did follow the directions perfectly. So 
We will see how it is because the complaints on this are that it is extremely sticky, that it is not long lasting, and that it is absolutely not transfer proof. Also at three stars, we have the Milk Makeup Lash Primer. This is the Kush Lash Primer, and they say that it is a lash primer with thickening heart-shaped fibers and conditioning hemp-derived cannabis seed oil for a volumized base. So this is the wand there for you. And the big complaint about this is that it leaves clumps within the lashes. And some people were saying that you could see the white through your mascara. I also purchased my first Urban Decay product in a very long time, the threesome blush in the shade Fly. And this is what it looks like on the inside. They say that it is a three-in-one blush, bronzer, and highlight palette with a new and improved formula that's creamy, lightweight, and lasts for up to 14 hours. The biggest complaints about this is that people are complaining that the reformulation was not a good choice. They don't like the new packaging. They feel like the shades are significantly different when they went to repurchase the new formula and also that the formula is chocolate. So you will see that in just a moment. Moving on to the eyeshadow palette that is on my eyes today. This is the Supreme Mauves palette by Artist Couture. They say it is a must-have eyeshadow and pressed pigment palette made up of 12 richly pigmented modern mauve shades in three different finishes to create endless looks. And you heard the keyword, pressed pigment, which means that one of these shades or more will have a pigment in here that is not FDA approved for eye use. They have not handled this very well in the description of this in that they have talked about both the matte shades and the shimmer shades being used on the eye. There's no indication as to which one of these is not FDA approved for eye use. I will tell you which one it is. It's only one and it is the one called Prestige, which is this guy down here. It has red 33 in it, but like we've talked about many, many times on this channel, red 33 and all of the red pigments that our country freaks out over are very very much approved in the European Union and most places all over the world with absolutely no problem, but the FDA just doesn't seem to see it as a priority to make it approved for eye use. Therefore, <laughs> makeup companies have to jump through all of these hoops in order to put them in eyeshadows, and one of them is to call it a pressed pigment instead of an eyeshadow. But that is not to say that some people do not have allergic reactions, some people do not have sensitivities to these pigments, so if that is you, you want to stay away from the shade Prestige, none of the rest of them have these uh, red pigments in them that may irritate some people, may stain the eye, etc. Not approved for eye use in the U.S., but approved most other places. And the big complaint about this is that the what they call the high pearl shades, they say they're difficult to work with. Very low color payoff, just basically crap. <laughs> Some people are saying they don't like the match too, but the biggest complaint seems to be on the shimmer shades. Now, this is the one, okay, where, you know, we're in the age of influencers not admitting when they've made mistakes and they've done something stupid. This is where I admit that I've made a mistake and I've done something very stupid. I have purchased the Glamnetic eyeliner without any Glamnetic lashes, which is stupid because the whole point of the Glamnetic eyeliner is that it works with magnetic lashes, that there's, you know, mag magnetic whatever in it that the magnetic lashes will stick to, and I don't have any of those. But why I'm trying it today is because the biggest complaint about this product is that it is very difficult to remove. So we're going to go through the removal process, and I will show you all of that at the end of the day so you can see if it truly is difficult to remove. So that is why I'm still showing you, even though I'm an idiot and not really using it for its intended purposes. <laughs> then I was thinking, I was like, I could go out and I could buy some magnetic lashes, but then you wouldn't be able to see the mascara. So then what's the point of reviewing the mascara? So it was just a big, huge fail. So we're just testing today how this applies, how it looks, and also how it removes, not the magnetic effects of it. That's the best I can do at this point. So hopefully it'll help somebody who had those specific questions. Today we'll also be taking a look Look at the Tarte BB Tinted Pr Treatment Primer. Okay, so it is, it's a, B it's a primer, but it's also a BB cream. Oh, well. <laughs> They say it is a low-maintenance, long-wearing vegan primer that can be used under or instead of foundation for smoother, brighter-looking skin. So the big thing I want to show you with this is the coverage of it. How can you really wear it as a light coverage, BB cream kind of situation? And the other thing is I want to look at the complaints people have, which is that the size is very tiny, which obviously we can see. It is definitely, I agree, it is very tiny for $16. And also the product leaves the skin looking dry. So we'll talk about that. And 
And I do have a foundation to put over top of it, but it is a powder foundation. This is the Benefit Cosmetics Hello Happy Velvet Powder Foundation. They say it is a lightweight powder foundation with buildable coverage and a matte finish. It has 2.7 stars on Sephora's website. The biggest complaint about this is that it is cakey. The other one is that they're just pissed. <laughs> they're pissed that they replaced the Hello Flawless Powder with this one. They don't like it as much. I've never tried that product, so I can't speak to that, but we'll be able to talk about whether this product is cakey or not. The second to lowest rated product that I purchase is the Milk Makeup Kush Waterproof Mascara. They say it is a waterproof intense black mascara with thickening heart-shaped fibers and conditioning hemp-derived cannabis seed oil. It's $14 for this little guy. And the biggest complaint about this is that it makes a huge mess, that it is not waterproof and it smudges everywhere. Here is the wand there for you. It is a big fatty, fatty wand. So I will be able to show you at the end of the day whether this made a huge mess all over my face or not. And then finally, the worst product that I tried, which again was not very much foresight, <laughs> even though I do test it out, it is not on my face today. This is the Semihaze Beauty Mini Super Slick Tinted Lip Balm. It is a travel friendly, moisture boosting lip balm infused with rose oil for a soothing effect. This is $24 and it is rated at 1.7 stars for this product. The major complaint in it that is that it is too small. It is very small. It is teeny tiny. This is $24 for this thing. <laughs> oh my gosh. I'll show you it compared to another mini size lipstick when I when I put it on. And I'll, we'll also talk about the formula a little bit because I do wear it for a little bit of the demo portion. So I can give you some impressions on it even though I'm not wearing it on my face today and it won't be part of the wear test. Oh my gosh, what is happening on my boob? Did I get makeup on my boob? I did. Oh, that's terrible. Why? Why? Look, it's right there on my boob too. Gosh, I'm gonna end up with wet boob. Is it gonna come off? No, I like this shirt. I hate that when you get makeup on one of your favorite shirts. Like that sucks. How did that even happen? When did that happen? We'll just go like this for now and I will see you in just a second and I'll show you how I got this look today and put on all of those products on my face. <laughs> All right, are you ready to put this stuff on? Yay! Okay, let us first address the red spot in the room. <laughs> it's kind of a strange story because I went to bed completely in my right mind, you know, nothing weird happening. I woke up and this was on my nose. I have no idea where it came from. I have no idea what I did. It's just there, but because it is now a closed wound, I can now put things on top of it like concealer to see if I can cover it up. So that's gonna be kind of cool. So, you know, I'm not hating that this is on my face right now. <laughs> All right, rolling up the sleeves for this. I'm excited. All right. The Tarte BB Cream says that it can be used as a primer or it can be used instead of foundation. So we're going to play with that today. I don't have any primer on uh, and we're just going to go for it. And just bloop, bloop. Does it say anything about application? It sends a small amount on the back of your hand, then using a foundation brush or your fingertips, lightly dab onto the face and gently blend. Because this is such a light coverage product, I'm going to start with just blending with my fingertips and seeing what I get. Okay, so it is, of course, extremely light. It definitely has an oily, a uh, little bit of an oily texture to it. You can see I'm putting it over my lips. You can see the coverage over top of my red lips. So there is a light coverage here. It feels almost like a silicone-based primer, but not really. It's, it's smooth like that, but it's more oily than silicone-y, if that makes sense. Most of the complaints were saying that it leaves the skin looking dry. So as of now, I have a little bit of dry patches here. And it's not making them look better, but I don't feel like it's making them look worse. Well, maybe a little bit up in here, just a tiny bit. I'm gonna go ahead and put on another layer and let's see if we can build it a little bit. And why don't I use a brush? I feel like the brush is just eating it up. Yeah, definitely not, not a good thing with the brush. I'm gonna finish it up just because I started, but I feel like the brush is eating up the product. I don't think this is a good way to apply it. It's definitely not a sheer coverage. It's a light coverage. There's there's something going on there. Let's just leave it alone because I don't want to cake on too much of it and then have it compromise the other products that I'm trying. As far as making my skin look dry, not really. I'm not seeing that, but maybe the people who were complaining about making their skin look dry, maybe they have naturally dry skin and it's just not a hydrating product. It's not a moisturizing product that'll help get rid 
rid of some of that dryness. And if you're looking for like a one-stop shop light coverage, you probably want something that's going to be hydrating. So maybe that's a way that this product could improve. All right, we're going to go into the Tarte Creaseless Concealer. Woo! So the big complaints on this are that it is not creaseless and that the texture is sticky. So let's look at the texture first. Looks like a concealer. Oh, there's the stickiness. I can feel it. It does have a tackiness to it. You can see how it covered up that freckle really nicely. For the directions, it says use less than you think you need. A little goes a long way. For best results, pair with Tarte's creaseless concealer brush sold separately. I don't have that. For dark circles, apply one swipe of concealer to the inner half of the under eye area, focusing where the darkness is, then blend outward. So that's what we're going to do. Right here is where my darkness is, is here. And then I am going to use a clean beauty sponge because I feel like that is going to be good as far as blending out such a sticky product. And it definitely has a stick to it. I can feel it on my skin, but I feel like that covered really nicely. I think that looks really good. Let's try this side. It isn't too much. It's not too little. Like I feel like it looks really good. I don't feel a heaviness to it. I can definitely tell what people are saying though about the stickiness. I can definitely feel that on my hand. I can't feel it here, maybe because of I'm like, using the sponge. So maybe that's something that people could try. If you purchase this, maybe try it with a sponge. Maybe the wetness will help kind of dull down the stickiness a little bit. And then it says for redness, which is what I have on my nose, we're going to try to cover that. You are supposed to directly apply it to any red or discolored areas and then blend outward. So let's do that. I'm going to put it right on it. Boop. And then we're going to boop, 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 boop. I mean, come on now. Where to go? Where'd it go? It's gone. It's gone. I mean, I got a little bit of texture. It changed kind of a little bit to more of a brown shade, but that looks pretty darn good, if I must say so. I'm going to put a little bit on my chin because I do have a little bit of redness on my chin, and we're going to blend outward. I feel like that looks pretty darn good, to be honest. But I only have one face. I mean, there may be reasons why it wasn't working for other people. All I can do is speak to what's happening on my face, and what's happening on my face is good things. Okay, let's try the Benefit Hello Happy Velvet Powder Foundation. So the big complaint about this is that it is cakey. The reason why I chose this is because I wanted to pair it with the BB cream because some, that's something that I like to do. If I have a lighter coverage product and then I want to increase the coverage, maybe I just want more full coverage that day, I like to use a powder foundation on top of it. For lighter coverage, apply Hello Happy Velvet Powder Foundation using a, the custom brush starting at the center of the face and blending outward to achieve a medium to full coverage. Apply with a custom custom sponge. I don't have custom anything. I have this sponge, so we're going to use this. Whoa. We're definitely getting mattifying. Definitely getting more coverage. So we'll look at the two sides. And I will say that this side naturally has just a little more freckles. I think it's sun damage from driving in the car without sunscreen before I started wearing sunscreen every day. <laughs> so this side definitely has more natural freckles. But one thing I realized before I do the other side is I forgot to check the creasing of the concealer. This side doesn't have the powder on it yet, and there's definitely a little bit of creasing. So let me go ahead and blend that a little bit. And this is not the first concealer to do that. A lot of my concealers do that. So let's do it to the other side, make sure it's fair. And now I'll apply this to this side. And maybe what I'll do is I will not put it under my eyes so we can see what it looks like later, just the concealer without the powder over top of it. It's definitely mattifying, which is not my preferred look right now. Usually I like, uh, I like more of a, like a dewy, more natural, not dewy, but like a more natural finish. And this is Matt, 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 Matt. Like, I look like a painting. I can definitely see where people would think that it looks cakey. I feel very much like an influencer right now. I feel like I'm very matte and flat. I'm not enjoying this finish at all. Here's the brush that comes with it, by the way. Oh, I'm an idiot. There was a sponge in here. I didn't realize. This is what I get for not trying it ahead of time. <laughs> there was a sponge in here, but honestly, like I don't really enjoy these sponges as much. I don't like holding them and pressing them, but in hindsight, I really should have used their sponge. Oh, oh well. But this is not the end of these products. I'm gonna continue playing with them and they will probably show back up if I have anything to add or if I really feel like they should be talked about again. They'll show up in a favorites and fails video in the future, I'm positive. Yeah, I definitely feel like I can see like the wrinkles here more 
I feel like because of that matte flat look, it's just, bleh. but when I get on the rest of my makeup, maybe it'll look better. So let's go into brows. Now, these were sent to me in PR by Makeup by Mario, like I mentioned before, a long time ago. And these are my favorite brow pencils. So it was really sad to see that they were so low down in rankings for Sephora's website. For the directions, you're just supposed to choose the shade that best resembles your natural brow color. There's no other directions on it. Um, but the complaint is, is that there's not enough color payoff and then it breaks. So as far as the color payoff, I'm gonna let you see and see what you think. This is in the shade Classic Brunette. And I did have another shade that I think was slightly darker than this that I ran out of. So we'll speak to the breaking thing in just a second. And I'm not pushing hard at all. So I don't understand why people are saying they're not getting a good color payoff unless the batch that I got was formulated somehow slightly differently or you know they've changed it a little bit since it's launched or something because I got these right at launch. But I don't I can't imagine why they would change it. Like it doesn't make any sense to me. But color payoff is like so easy, fantastic, and I love the little clicky guy on the side. Now, the only thing about the clicky guy while I'm brushing these out is that, like they said, when you get to the very end, the because of the clicky guy on the inside, it can't hold on to the bottom of the product. So you lose like a centimeter's worth of product at the end of it, which really sucks because most brow pencils you can use pretty much all the way to the end, but this one you absolutely can't um, because it just falls out. And because of the nature of the product, it just doesn't hold on to it. So if that bothers you to lose like a centimeter's worth of product at the bottom, then you definitely don't want to get this. But I freaking love this brow pencil. <laughs> I've loved it ever since I got it. It's like literally one of my favorites. So that's where I'm at on it. I'm scared of this eyeshadow primer. The Kat Von D, Kat Von D, stop Jen. The KVD Shake Primer High Impact Eyeshadow Primer. It is literally a liquid. I've never used an eyeshadow primer like this before in my life. It says how to use shake well to fully mix. Remove the cap. Press the button on the bottom of the bottle to dispense one drop on the fingertip. Massage fingers together and apply on each lid. Just one drop is enough for both eyes. Let dry a few seconds before applying eyeshadow. A little bit goes a long way. So let's do that. One drop. I don't even need to push the button hardly, barely. And then I'm supposed to go like this and rub it. And then like this. Oh, it feels very oily. I can see why the people with oily lids do not like this, the way that it feels. Got to be ambidextrous, I guess. But it definitely has an oily feel to it. See, now I'm feeling like I probably shouldn't have put it on both eyes, right? Because then, what if the eyeshadow primer is janky and that's why the eyeshadow palette doesn't work? I'm going to take it off one eye. All right, we're going to use tried and true. We're going to use the Milani Eye Primer on this side and then that way we can make sure that it's not the eye primer making the eyeshadow look janky oh one thing i wanted to show you because this we're not going to use for the final look while we're getting everything else on i'm going to apply this this is the semi haze beauty mini super slick tinted lip balm oh my gosh it is tiny so this is 24 dollars. look at this that's all the product you get for $24. <gasps> That's not a lot. For comparison, I got that Sephora lip kit, the one um, that had all the little samples in it for the holiday. This is the Give by Gwen Stefani sample that you got in that. And then this is the Semi Haze Beauty. So they're about the same. And this was part of a gift set. And this is a, technically a full size. There's no full size of this. It only comes in a mini version. That's it. The $24 mini is the full size and this is a mi true mini 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 so let me just apply this i'm scared to have it rolled all the way up too because it'll break so let me just roll it down a little and let's put that on and see how it feels Ooh, feels like a lip balm mm. it does feel nice on the lips just a little tint of color very nice i did have a little bit of foundation on my lips so let me take that off and reapply it without foundation I do feel like that color was skewed by how much foundation I had on my lips. So let's try it without. So pretty. It sucks that it's so small. 
they say this is one gram of product. And what's so weird is that on their website, they do have another product. It is the Velvet Blur Matte Lipstick Balm, which is not called a mini. It's $36 and it's 30 grams. So that's 30 times the size of this for $12 more? Like what is even happening? <laughs> well, the only thing I could think of is that they could only get this packaging in two different sizes and they didn't want to do the full size for some reason of the lipstick balm. I don't know. It's really freaking weird. It's weird how expensive this is. But really that was only complaint on this is that it's too small. It feels great. It looks great. It's real pretty. I like, I like the way it looks. Now my eye primer has dried down, so let's go ahead and jump into this eyeshadow palette by Artist Couture. It's the Supreme Mauves palette, and this is the second time I've used it. I have used some of these shades on another day, and I already have some a little bit of opinion on it, but I'm curious to see how it's going to go today. So let me go ahead and do some swatches for you real quick. We're just going to do one dip in the pan. Run out of space, no! I want to get them all on there. Three more. You can do it. You can do it. Three more. Almost more! <laughs> okay. So I was actually expecting the swatches to look worse than this, to be 100% with you, based on the description that people were having issues with. So the mattes definitely are swatching pretty nicely. This one's a little bit chunky. Let me see if I can blend that a little bit. Yeah, it's just a little bit chunky, but the shimmery guys, really, it's just this one right here that looks like doo-doo. The rest of them, the color's showing up. It really is. So I'm super curious how this is gonna show up on the eyes when I play with more colors than I have before. For the sake of time, I'm just gonna put some music on in the background and let you enjoy a little bit while I get this eye look on. I want to be daring, baby, dance the night away. I let my head down if I want. Don't you just get tired chasing fame and being pretty all the time? Doesn't sound like fun. You can do better. Let me show you what a good time looks like. You can do better. So much better. I don't like how dark this look is. It's it's giving me too much nighttime. So I'm adding in the cream shade here and then I'm gonna put that shimmer back on top of it. Actually, you know what we're gonna do? I'm gonna use a little bit of this makeup by Mario. This is his ma metal manipulator, which will wet the brush. And that's what it says will help give the most impact. So when I dip back into this shade Risqué, it should be more foiled on the eye because I pretty much covered it all up with that matte shade. I'm gonna dip it in the shadow first and then dip it in to wet it. I'm scared to go back in because I don't want to ruin the shadow. Oh, there we go. Never mind. Never mind. Never mind. We're doing all right. Woo! There we go. I'm going to try to bring that down this way a little bit. That's pretty. I love that. The wet brush really makes a difference. I'm going to do the same thing with that purple and see if I can get that really to pop because it kind of looks a mess over on the side now. And I don't see any damage in the pan from the wetness, which is fantastic. Yes, 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 yes. But see that the, the shimmer isn't matching because the risque is so much more chunky than the seductress one on the bottom. So I'm gonna try to blend them together a little bit. Mm, it's not working. Let me try my fingertip. Because I want there to be kind of a blend there between the two shades. It still looks kind of messy and I'm getting a bunch of fallout. Ooh, gosh. Definitely a much bigger fan of the wet brush. I don't think you even necessarily need like something like this. You could probably just use water. The risque shade looks like it's come off a little bit on this side. Let me see if I can build it back up. It's definitely not an easy palette to work with, but Depending on how much experience you have with this, you may find it easier. Let's try wetting it again. There we go. It just has to be nice and wet. 
There we go. Okay. All right. I feel better now. <laughs> as far as applying over the two different primers, I didn't really notice anything. All right, here comes my idiot self with the Glamnetic eyeliner without any magnetic lashes. <laughs> but we can test removal later. We will do that. Maybe you want to use this on days you're not wearing magnetic lashes. I need to stop talking while I'm doing this because I'm messing up. You're messing up, Jen. The tip definitely doesn't bend to the eye the way that a brush tip does, which is my personal preference. I really enjoy brush tip marker liners but it's overall applying very black, very opaque, looks really good. A little harder to apply that wing because I feel like the, the liquid isn't flowing to the tip as well as some marker liners that I've used. So you have to kind of go over and over that spot, uh, which might end up giving you not the look you're going for with your wing. I got it to work, but definitely not my favorite. Overall, I like the way that it looks though, looks good. Biggest complaint about the Milk Makeup Eyelash Primer is that it is clumpy, so we will find out whether it truly is. I do like the um, the container though. It feels really nice. It's like a metal container. It feels great. I'm just gonna put this on the one eye and we're gonna see how it goes. I like this kind of wand with the staggered bristles. I like that a lot. I am seeing some initial clumping, but it's not bad. I mean, I feel like all of these, like the Lancome one, like all of these have a little bit of a clump to them, but it's really not clumping. I thought it'd be way worse than this. Like to the point where you're gonna write a Sephora review, I don't, I don't see it. All right, let's go in with the Kush mascara that supposedly is very smudgy. Here is the wand on it, big, huge, fat wand. Another one of the complaints about the primer was that you could see the white through it, through the mascara when you put the mascara on. And I think that's gonna depend a lot on what mascara you choose. If you're using a lash primer, I'm gonna do one more coat and then we're gonna move over to the other side. So, so far it's pretty much just coloring the lashes, maybe giving me a little bit of volume, not a ton of length, mostly volume. Okay, so the mascara is supposed to have fibers in it too. Mm. Let's try it without the primer. This is wimpy. This is real weak. Why isn't anybody complaining that it's weak? Like I can barely even see that I have mascara on. Now I appreciate the primer side so much more. Man, okay. This is definitely not gonna be one that I will ever purchase again. Just because it's weak, the primer side is so much better. So much better. I'm gonna see if I can, I know my eyeshadow is really dark. I'm gonna see if I can show you the difference. Oh, well, there you go. It's going on a little bit better with this coat. There we go. Now it's building. It just took a little bit of love, a little bit of time. So I definitely think it looks thicker with the primer on, 100%. Let me see if I can get you to see it. I'm gonna turn my head. Yeah, you can see that pretty well. Let's turn the head this way. Hopefully you can see, I can't see that side because the way my monitor is, I can't see whether you can see. But hopefully you can see. Yeah, not not super impressed for, for an expensive mascara, not impressed, but that wasn't even the complaint. The complaint was that it's not waterproof and it smudges, so that we will find out. All right, let's check the concealer, how's it doing? Looks like I have, looks like I have some creasing on the non-powder side. Let me tap that in real quick. And I will tell you that this lip balm is dry as hell now. Like I can feel it here. It's very dry. Some of the balminess is still on the outer portion of my lip, but I guess because I've been talking, this part of the inside is just dry. It doesn't feel like a lip balm anymore. It doesn't feel great. Let's move on to the cheeks, the Urban Decay Threesome Palette. La 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 la. And I got this in the shade Fly. Okay, it says use a larger kabuki or foundation brush to sweep on all three powders together for a sun-kissed effortless glow. Blend it over the cheekbones, brow bones, or use it anywhere you want for extra highlight. Sounds like they want you to use a dense brush. So I'm just gonna sweep them all together and just whoop. Ooh, uh, that's pretty. Ooh, I like that. That went on nicely. Do it again, whoop. I like the way they swept, 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 swept it. <laughs> I like the way they swept on. Very nice. It was effortless. It was effortless, I have to say. Not a lot of time spent on that, but that was effortless. Let me swatch them separately just so you can see how they look. 
And what was the complaint on this? Oh, that the shades were different than before. They don't like the new packaging and they said the formula is chalky. I don't feel like the formula feels chalky at all. That's just my opinion. Here's the three shades all together separately. <laughs> and I like the packaging. I think it's nice other than it picking up fingerprints. I like it. One thing is it's very easy to open. So if you have like fine motor difficulties, there's no like click closure, you just pull it. You do have to be able to grab and pull. You have to be able to squeeze, but there's no like, it's not hard to open. This one's a magnetic closure too, but this one is harder to open. You gotta squeeze harder and pull harder. Just a stronger magnet. So the only thing I haven't used yet is the lip. So let me pull this off. And this is complicated. This Lady Gaga Atomic Shake Long Lasting Liquid Lipstick. It says carefully follow instructions to activate transfer proof color and shine. Shake well for five seconds. One, two, three, four, five. Open upright to prevent spillage like a nail polish. Apply an even layer to each lip. Keep lips separated and allow product to dry for 10 to 15 seconds without blotting or rubbing to allow shine shield to form. Here we go. Allow color and shine to set for comfortable all day wear. Okay, so I guess you're not supposed to blot it. I can tell you it is, it feels sticky. Like I can feel it on my lips. I also feel like it's not even on my lips. Let me fix that. Ooh. No, I went too high. Okay. The applicator is very soft. It bends really nicely to the lips. Really enjoyed that. I don't like the idea that I can't blend it out. Let me see if I can blend it a little with my fingertips instead of by blotting them together because apparently blotting is bad. I like that color. The color's really pretty. It feels awful though. If you don't like textures, like I don't like textures, it feels very, very sticky. I can feel my lips sticking together. Wasn't there an MLM that had a product that was similar to this? Like lip, lip something? Symmetry is not my strength. All right, we're letting it be. We're gonna let it, we're gonna stop because I'm gonna mess it up. Mm, the lips are stuck together. <laughs> it's like, if you let your lips stay together for too long, they get stuck, oh no. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and zoom out. I'll be right back. All right, we are zoomed out. Oh my goodness, <laughs> it's like cement. And I, when I pulled my lips apart, it was like, ma. <laughs> Trying to get my lips apart. All right, here we go. Pull the hair down. Woo! Hair is a mess. All right, turn that off. Pull it over here. This lipstick is very dark. Very, very dark. I do like the shine on it. It's really pretty. But I don't know. I need some hairspray or something. Hair's out of control. So my friend, it is currently 2.13 in the PM. So I will be back at about 10.15 tonight to check and see how all of this wore. Uh, and I'll have a final first impressions. We'll just call it a first impressions of these products for you then. So it's going to be many hours for me. Just a second for you. Here we go. One, two, three. All right. It is cold out. So I'm wearing my coat. Let me tell you. Okay, so first, before I tell you, we are two and a, two hours in. It's 4.30, so like two hours and 15 minutes in. Let me show you what we're dealing with now. So first, I have to tell you, I hate this lipstick with my entire soul. I hate, it feels so bad. It feels so bad. It is a constant heaviness and stickiness. And every time I close my mouth for like a long, you know, a minute or so, my lips stick together. So I feel them separate and I'm constantly feeling in the corner of my mouth. Like while, while I'm talking right now, I feel them stick, unstick, stick, unstick, stick, unstick, just right here in the corners, right? Lipstick, hate it. All right. I also have, I'm not sure if you can see it because I know I can see it in the mirror, but I have a lot of glitter fallout happening uh, from the eyeshadow. The other thing is, is I will have to take a picture in my bathroom in natural light. My skin looks like complete shit. <laughs> my skin looks so bad. My skin texture just does not look like my skin texture. <laughs> it looks cakey and dry, and that is not normal for me. So let me see if I can get close and see if you can see. I'm going to take you in my bathroom, though. So hopefully it'll capture it. But like under my eyes, like it looks so bad. All right, hold on a second. I'm going to take you out of natural light and let's go in my bathroom. Okay, I apologize for the fan noise. The fan goes on and off automatically. I can't turn it off. But I don't know if you can see how cakey this fun. It looks so bad. I'm hoping you can see it because it's offensive. <laughs> how bad it looks. 
So I'm starting to lean toward believing Sephora reviews because so far pretty much everything is coming true. My mascara still is fine. I have no like, if I go like this on it, it's, my lashes feel actually relatively soft. I'm just gonna kind of push on it a little bit to see, cause I don't usually have smudging issues, but I don't see it even trying to move. So maybe it's just not a good test for me personally cause I don't usually have smudging problems. Um, but yeah, we'll keep trying it and then we're gonna go through the removal process. So brows are still looking good, eyeliner's still looking good, blush and, uh, is still looking good, but, uh, but yeah. I have many thoughts, but I will see you back. Uh, what was it? I don't know. Another six hours or so. I'll see. I'll see you soon. One, two, three. Day is done. Okay, I'm cheating a little bit. I cannot take having this makeup on my face anymore. I can't stand it. It is currently 9:58. So I'm about 15 minutes early, but this lipstick is driving me bonkers. Like, look at it. Look at it. Look at it. It's awful. It's so bad. My whole face is so bad. I'm going to take a picture of my face because I think it doesn't even look as bad on the camera as it does in person. Let me just take a picture because this is awful. All right, here we go. Ready? One, two, three. Do I fake a smile well? <laughs> it's like, I look like hell. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna go over each product and we'll talk about what I think so far. And then I'm gonna try to wash it off and we're gonna see like what happens with the eyeliner taking it off. I'm gonna take you in the bathroom. We're gonna do all of the things. Let's start where I started, which was the base. So, <laughs> okay, I think what's happening is I think this would have performed totally differently if I hadn't topped it with this. I think this was the killer on it. And I think what killed it as far as the cakiness on my face was using the sponge rather than the brush in here. I am going to keep trying this. I'm going to use the brush next time. Uh, I want to try this over a bare face. I want to try it over just a regular no pigment primer. I want to do like so much more with this to fully test it out. But what I have learned today is that I do not like it applied with a sponge because because you can see every single pore in my face, like all, everything. It looks horrible. As far as my brows, I think my brows look pretty good. I still stand by this freaking pencil, even though, like I said, when I was putting it on, it, you do lose some product at the end if you don't like that. You don't want this. There's definitely plenty of products that don't do that, but I do enjoy the application. I stand by that. Looking at both eyes, I would say they look relatively even between the KVD one and the Milani one. But of course, this is just one eyeshadow palette. It's going to be needed to be tested with many eyeshadow palettes. I think because I don't have oily lids, I didn't have the same problems as the people in the reviews. So if you don't have oily lids, you may really like this. Do I think it is 100% worth the price over the Milani? No, absolutely not. I feel like you can just get the Milani, why complicate your life? Eyeshadow palette. I do feel like my eyeshadow looks fantastic still as far as the color pigment on my eyes. What is not good, what is really bad, is the immense, intense amount of glitter underneath my eyes. It is obnoxious. Like, my whole under eyes are just sprinkled with it. Like, a fairy just came by and just went, poof, like, right in my face. It is so bad. It's definitely one of the worst glitter fallouts I have ever seen in an eyeshadow palette. Um, and I don't see any difference between the amount, between the two. Two different primers. So what that says to me is this is definitely going to benefit from like a NYX glitter glue, something like that to hold the glitter on. I do, will say that the formula in here does take some getting used to. I felt like the mattes were a little hard for me to control. I just wasn't used to the formula. So I would just have to learn and adjust. I don't think it's a deal breaker. I just feel like it just, it didn't move the way I'm used to eyeshadows moving, but I don't think it was a bad thing. I think it was 
was just me, like I said, getting used to the formula. Now the shimmer shades, I think those also have a learning curve to them, but I do think that they can be quite beautiful. Besides the glitter glue, I feel like wetting them really helped to give them some opacity, but I do think some of these would be very pretty on their own, just a wash of shine on the lid, of course, over top of a glitter glue. So I do think there is a purpose for this. I don't think it's a bad palette. I just think that it there's there's some there's some things to play with in order to make it work. And if you don't want that, if you don't want if that sounds too difficult for you, too complicated, skip it, man. Like you don't you don't really need it. But if you want to try something that's a little bit different, if you're tired of the same old formulas, this may be something you want to invest in. I forgot to talk about the concealer when I was talking about foundation, so let's talk about that. Now, as far as it being creaseless, I do not have creases on my under eye. I think that what is critical with this, and I think it should have been said in the application marketing, is that when you apply it under the eyes, you do need to bounce it out with either a beauty sponge or maybe uh, with a brush or even tapping it with the fingertips after it's sat for a minute or two. And I find that with my fine lines under my eyes, that's most concealers. I, you know, in the past couple of years, I don't think I've found a concealer that I don't need to do a little bit of padding afterward after it's given a chance to kind of wrinkle in my wrinkles and form a crease but after I did that it's beautiful now as far as on my nose it's definitely broken up on my nose but I do think that some of that probably has to do with the concoction underneath <laughs> So I'm not holding it 100% against it. As far as my chin goes, there is a, some breaking up of it as well. But again, I don't think I can hold it 100% against this. The stickiness is a real thing though. It really is. It's not like super sticky. There's just a tackiness to it that may be uncomfortable for some people upon application. But once it's on, I don't feel any tackiness or stickiness at all. The eyeliner lasted beautifully. Absolutely beautifully. <laughs> of course, again, I can't speak to the magnetic effect of it because I'm an idiot and didn't buy any magnetic lashes. But I will probably, most likely, I'm going to see if I can work out buying some lashes. I don't know if I want to buy magnetic lashes to test this, to be 100% honest. Would you, do you care if I spend like $30 on a pair of magnetic lashes? Is it worth it to you to find out that information from me? Let me know. Because if it's not worth it to you, it's not really worth it to me. <laughs> Or to be honest, but we're gonna wash this off and see what happens as far as that critique of it. As far as the mascaras go, I didn't have any problem with them. Zero problems. I have a tiny bit of flaking on the primer side, but nothing on the other side. No smudging, but honestly, like in hindsight, that probably wasn't the best thing for me personally to test because smudging is not a problem I typically have. Flaking can be a problem for me, but not smudging. So I, I don't think that the people in the reviews are wrong. I think they just have different eye types. Maybe they have oily lids, maybe they have watery eyes, something like that. Not really happening here, but we're, again, we're gonna test the waterproofness when we wash my face. We'll, we'll splash it with some water. We'll, we'll test that. The blush palette. It's definitely faded, but it is definitely still there. I would say it's pretty good as far as the lasting power with the swirling all together. The first time I used this, which because I have used it one other time, I did do the separation where I did the blush and then the bronzer and the highlighter separately, and I found the same thing. that The lasting power was just okay. It was fine. But all these things are going to need to be tested more for a final thought. But the thing that I cannot... I cannot anymore with is this dang liquid lipstick. I can't. I have I have felt this for the past almost eight hours on my lips constantly. And you know, I have an issue with texture. I don't like sticky things on my face. I don't even like setting sprays because I don't like the uneven feeling on my face as it's drying down. Like this has been constant that I have thought about my lips for the past eight hours. It has been awful, but what I will say is the lasting power on this is actually pretty good. I mean, it looks like trash right now, but, but I'm going to show you some pictures of 
my eating of the dinner. So for dinner tonight, I made a pasta that had some steak strips in it and some vegetables and the sauce was like a creamy cheese sauce kind of situation. So there was definitely some oil involved and I wiped my mouth with a napkin. I'll even show you my napkin. <laughs> some of the lipstick did come off, but not a lot of it. It was really just the inner rim of my mouth that was coming off when it con come in contact with the oil. But my lipstick still looked really good after dinner. I think the cracking and the disgustingness happening is just me constantly being uncomfortable, moving my mouth, kind of, you know, it's just been so uncomfortable. So it may have better, even better lasting power on somebody else that w isn't quite as uncomfortable. I feel like this is the stiletto heels of lipsticks. <laughs> it's awful. It feels horrible. I kissed my husband. I was like, please kiss me so that I can test this liquid lipstick. And he looked at me like I was nuts. And he was like, is it going to get all over me? And I said, I don't think so. I just want you to tell me whether it feels sticky. And he was like, yeah, it absolutely feels sticky. So I want you to take that information and apply it as you will. I do really do think there was an MLM company that had a liquid lipstick like this that people talked about a lot. And some people really loved it. Some people hated it. And I feel like this is pretty much the exact same thing from what I've heard of that liquid lipstick. If you know what I'm talking about, I can't remember what it is. I'm not an MLM kind of person. And I already kind of told you how I felt about this lip balm. I haven't tried it on since, so I have no updated information for you. And with that being said, it is time to wash this stuff off and then I will be back with final thoughts. Hello, welcome to another bathroom in my house that you have not seen. I have a stupid amount of bathrooms and this is coming from a person that grew up with one bathroom. I lived with my parents and my older brother and my great grandfather and we had one little teeny tiny bathroom, but this is the basement bathroom. Welcome. So I am going to use the fabulous Clinique Take the Day Off in just a second, but what I wanna do first is I wanna put some water on my eyes and see if this mascara is truly waterproof. So here we go. I don't have a way to get the angle because of the way the bathroom's set up. So I'm just gonna go like this with water. and it is already smudging. This is not waterproof. I probably should have just flicked it on me. Waterproof mascara doesn't do this. Waterproof mascara does not run like this. This is not a waterproof mascara. I agree with the reviews 100% on that. All right, I'm just gonna go the rest of my face and put a little of the Clinique Take the Day Off. Take this day off because I am feeling done with this face. And let's check the eyeliner because remember they said the eyeliner did not remove even with Cleansing balms, makeup remover, all of that, micellar water. People were saying it did not remove. All right, let me rinse this. All right, and I have a white towel, so we'll be able to see what took off. Lots of makeup on there, and you can see the eyeliner is definitely still on. Like hardcore still on. My lips are even still on. Look at that, the lips are still on. So let's go on with a second. Second pass, and I did emulsify my cleansing balm, I promise. Who was that? James Welsh was bitching about people not emulsifying their cleansing balms on Twitter. I think it was James. <laughs> I'm gonna be a little rough on my eyes because I really wanna get this off. Let's rinse round two. And this eyeliner is still on. <laughs> it is still freaking on. These reviews were 100% right in this stuff being impossible, impossible to remove. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this Ren Perfect Jelly Cleanser and I am going to use that and see if that helps. Okay, and there's still eyeliner on my eyes. Oh my gosh, you know what I need? I need a makeup eraser, that's what I need. Makeup eraser to the rescue. I bet you this will work. This makeup eraser gets off everything. Freaking love these things. Yep, it's gone. Yay! All right, makeup is finally off. Let's go back into the other room. 
And with that being said, my friend, it is now your turn in the collective brain of makeup awesomeness where we help each other not to buy crap and to buy things that are totally worth it. I hope you loved today's video. It is your turn to chime in on these products. If you've ever tried them, do you agree with the complaints? Did you have a similar experience to me, a different experience to me? I only have one face. So it's great to get opinions from the community, whether they back me up or whether they're different, it doesn't matter. As long as it's honest, that's all that matters. So we can all learn from you. Thank you again so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please make sure you give it a thumbs up on the way out. It helps YouTube to know to share it with more people. But if you would like to hang out just a little bit longer, YouTube should be recommending a couple of videos for you right over here to watch, including one I picked out for you special. It's right down there. And one that YouTube picked for you that's right at the top. But if you do need to go, it is no problem at all. Thank you for hanging out as long as you did. I know this is a long one. I appreciate it. Mad love to you. And I will see you in a video very, very soon.